Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing. Well, the livestock futures leaning mostly higher except for a few hog contracts while the grain trade was lower following the April WASD. And John, let's talk a little bit about that. Certainly nothing in the WASD for the bulls, especially those South American production numbers. Why is USDA so, I guess, why do they keep lagging in terms of budging those numbers? You know, USDA continues to slow play that South American crop, even despite the, the analyst projections, as well as some of the groups down in Argentina and Brazil having things significantly lower. It's a pretty wide spread right now between what the USDA is saying and what those groups are saying. I think some of it comes down to the question about planted acreage or planted area down there in terms of what's available or what's really out there. You know, we've seen this the last handful of reports from the USDA actually have to go back and bump up the Brazil crop from last year because of that same issue. And so with that, in their minds, it's probably easier to be slower on the cuts than it is to have to raise it back up down the road. So I think that's some of what's going on. We have to see as we get a little further along in harvest, they'll probably bring those numbers down uh, at least to get themselves in line. I think the market's discounting them already anyway at this time frame. That's why we didn't see much of a reaction to those numbers coming out uh, this afternoon. It's just the pure fact the market knows that that Brazil crop and maybe and even that Argentina crop, especially on the corn side, might be a little bit lower than what the USDA is targeting. Yeah, but right now you're looking at a 13 million metric ton discrepancy between uh, the Brazil corn number that we have from USDA and CONAB's number. When does that come together, do you think? At what point? You know, I think some of that's going to be just dictated by the export market and the prices that are offered out there. Right now, the U.S. is still, you know, with the exception of Ukrainian corn, the best game in town in terms of value. And as long as that persists, I still think that's something that's going to help, uh, you know, keep that market moving. It might be one just like we see here. The cash market might be more of a dictator in terms of, you know, what's happening in futures prices and things of that nature. You know, so that'll still be a key. Now, as we get closer into the harvest window, we get the combines rolling down there. We start to see what type of crop is coming out of Brazil. You know, and see those numbers are in that window. The USDA will probably have to bring its numbers down. But obviously, like I said, I think the market's already discounted a portion of that big spread between the two, just with the understanding that the USDA is going to slow play this. And here's what's out there in terms of the export market and the export prices. Oh, let's talk about domestic numbers as well. We did get a cut in corn ending stocks by 50 million bushels, but the market was expecting a little bit more than that while we saw increases in ending stocks for both soybeans and wheat, didn't we? Yes, we did. You know, first off on the corn side of the equation, we did see, you know, a bump in ethanol as well as feed usage, 25 million bushels into each category. You know, that was reflective of the grain stocks report at the end of March where we found, the, uh, found good usage in the first quarter. So we knew that was going to carry into the balance sheet. So again, there was no major surprises there. Yeah, the analysts did expect the carryover to come down another 20 million bushels. So that was one of the reasons we were a little firmer in that regard. So again, like I said, nothing big for the bulls in that. I classified the corn report as relatively neutral. You go to the soybean side of the equation, that was disappointing seeing that 20, uh, 20 million bushels come off that export demand, throw in there some movements on the residual side to get that extra carryover well above what the market was anticipating. But again, grain stocks, we found some extra bushels of, of soybeans out there. So that had to get worked into the balance sheet to some level. I think the surprise maybe in terms of the three grains was the was the 30 million bushel cut on feed usage but in the wheat market. You know, in terms of that, you know, but you got to understand wheat's competing against a cheaper level of corn price right now. And we saw the feed movement from basically wheat to corn on the balance sheet today. And we had disappointing exports out on the weekly report this morning, um, including a marketing year low for corn exports, right? Yeah, the corn number was the one that was the most surprising, I think, to everybody this morning. But, you know, coming in at 325,000 metric tons and, you know, in the market the last handful of weeks, we've been well over 1 million uh, or at least over the 1 million mark. So that was a pretty big drop. And even the low end of the analyst expectations at 750,000, you know, so that was disappointing to see. Not sure what the re reason why. Obviously, you know, we're just a little bit post Easter holiday. We also did have, you know, a fairly good price move at the end of the month, too. So that just may have shut the exporters off. Again, just telling us that corn prices can't rally too much before the, the momentum will shift to other locations for that cheaper corn product. Soybean sales continue to be disappointing. The reason why we saw that cut in those export sales or export projections today, you know, and then we getting close to the end of the market year, too. Uh, 
also just struggling against the cheaper global supplies of wheat. And John, uh, not a good technical day on Thursday for corn or beans with some new lows for the move in the bean market, right? Yeah, disappointing move in terms of price action today, you know, in the corn market. We call them an outside day, took out the highs and lows from the previous day, finished right at the bottom of the range, either challenging or pushed through some of the moving average support that's there. Just looks like the market's weak in this window here as we move in towards the end of April. Soybeans, again, new low for the move, just really couldn't find any traction even after the report, even though we did come off our lows a little. But at the same time, again, the bean market with the heavier supply picture, the cheaper South American beans coming into the marketplace now that Argentina's harvest is starting to begin, just makes it feel like both those markets could be on a bit of a slippery slope, at least technically here in this window. So now the focus turns to weather plus the pricing of some of these May basis contracts coming up. Yeah, the basis contract window is very concerning. You saw that happen in November on the December contracts. The entire month of February was negative because of those March basis contracts. And now we're hitting that window here for the May basis contracts. If any producers rolled those out, now they're going to be getting into that next pricing window towards the end of the month. The market knows that and uh, goes after those bushels put some pressure on the week long. In this case, the person is week long in the market is the producer knowing to have to make some type of decision whether to roll it, take on the carry again, or go ahead and just price those bushels with the heavy supplies up front. Just makes it a very difficult market situation. So I'm a little cautious here uh, and defensive here going into the end of the month. So we'll have to see how that kind of plays out uh, going forward. You know, with the week price action day, now we're through the report. Really, weather won't be much of a factor until we get into May. It just kind of leaves that window open here for be for corn prices to just kind of struggle, especially if we got some action that needs to happen in the cash market. Does this give funds even more ammunition, John, to continue to add to their short position? I don't think there's any reason for them to want to step out of it. That's for sure. And uh, again, if they, you know, a lot of these times the funds. The algos are momentum traders. If the momentum's pushing one way, they'll pile into it. Again, we saw that in February. You know, look, that's why the technical close today for both corn and soybeans was kind of disappointing because it kind of points that momentum downward. You know, so it's, again, I'm very cautious here, you know, in terms of prices sliding go going forward because of just the structure of the market in general. And the cattle market was able to actually recover on Thursday after some new lows for the move in the feeder cattle market. And that was despite some lower cash trade at 182. What do you make of that? Is that a good sign? You know, let's go back to yesterday a little bit. That big jump in the dollar, the inflation data, I think, put some pressure on the cattle market. When inflation goes up, livestock prices have a tendency to tumble because of the thought of the consumer dollar getting pressured. You know, so today we did see some price recovery. Again, it's related to that cash market. We're such a discount futures to cash that the money flows back in when we see cash trade, even though it is lower than last week, a couple bucks down in the south at 182. We'll see if we get more trade put together. It's still very early. You know, it was enough to bring a little momentum in. If you look at the June contract trading at 174 and 173.90 at the close today, you know, so that at least gives us market some floor. Realistically, all the trade this week so far, though, has been in the range from Friday's big sell-off. So that's discouraging to me. We need to find a way to get up through that sell-off point from last Friday. And then I feel a little bit better about the markets and the charts have turned. But right now, this has really been just a very volatile consolidation week overall. All right. So you're not ready to call a bottom yet then? Not at this point. Like they said, okay. like the price get through that fry from last fry high from Friday last week. Conversely, let's talk about hogs because we had a bearish key reversal. We tried to rebound a little bit today in the hog market, but do you think the top is in there? You know, that was a very ugly reversal yesterday. Again, maybe tied to just the selling in the livestock sector overall. But that hog market felt like it's been getting over its skis a little bit here lately with this runoff that lows since January. But encouraging things today, strong export sales numbers again for pork. Still looking at retail values over the $100 per, uh, pork carcass level. And the cash index continues to trend higher. So at least the fundamentals are there to support this. But that's a really impressive low or reversal, excuse me, on yesterday's charts. Wouldn't be shocked maybe we go back and retest the top of that. But if we can't get through it, that would definitely give us a topping signal. Thanks so much for joining us. John Heinberg with Total Farm Marketing. That is Markets Now.